Hey, Aloha. Welcome to Stan the Energy Man. Stan Osterman here from the Hawaii Center for Advanced Transportation Technologies, part of the state of Hawaii's TBID. And uh, we're here to help make jobs and do things in Hawaii that have to do with high tech and transportation. And so we're going to talk a little bit more about transportation today with one of my partners in crime from the State Energy Office, Margaret Larson. She and I are both electric vehicle junkies. She kind of tends towards batteries, not like hydrogen, but we find a lot of common ground in just electric vehicles. So we're going to talk to Margaret today about maybe some of the things that are going on in the legislature. Um, we're going to talk about uh, some of the things going on in our office, in our state, um, and around the state that are uh, that are kind of late breaking news in electric vehicles and transportation in Hawaii. And um, before we get started, though, I'd like to thank Rachel and Eric from last week, uh, talking about strategic planning and uh, and filling in for me after I had a little bit of surgery at Straub. And I appreciate them jumping in at the last minute and taking care of that, so I could get some plumbing work done and get all squared away and all up to 100 percent. Back to normal. So thanks to Eric and uh, and Rachel for doing that. They did a great job, by the way. So today, Margaret, Hi. thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. Be Glad you're feeling better. Yeah. Me too. Last Monday, I wasn't feeling so good. Jeez. So it was good to be here. But um, thanks for being on the show today, especially fairly short notice. And uh, um, let's let's jump right into the um, the corridor, the electric vehicle corridor thing. That uh, you know, I got some great feedback. I was talking to Department of Energy, and of course, they're they're not directly tied to your effort there, but they read your report, and this is back in Washington D.C. And they they said it was an outstanding uh, piece of work that you put in, and they were really happy to see that we had attached the hydrogen piece to the electric corridor as well. So, why don't you tell us a little bit about that project? Great, yeah. The Federal Highways um, put out a call for nominations for states uh, to nominate um, alternative fuel corridors across the nation with the intent of connecting um, locations and popular destinations so that folks can drive from across the country um, in an alternative fuel vehicle. And they put that nomination out. We submitted um, our proposal, which um, we nominated two corridors, one on Oahu and one on Maui. And we were actually designated. Um, we got that designation, I think, this October. Um, and so what we, what is now designated, the one on Oahu, um, because it was through the federal highways, they wanted um, to basically focus on designating federally uh, federal roads, I guess, okay. or state roads. Like H3, like H1. Like H3, H1, okay. yeah, exactly. And so that's what we focused on. Mm -hmm. However, we, would, we did put the caveat that our corridor extends for a one-mile buffer on each mm -hmm. end, so it can still touch our surface streets or our county roads. Um, and then on same on Maui, we actually did corridors for Molokai and Lanai. Now the designation was um, slated as pending signage or signage ready. And the signage ready um, is more so you would put signs along that corridor where you actually have charging stations or hydrogen filling stations. Okay. The corridor on Oahu, we titled electric drive, so to incorporate hydrogen. Um, on Maui, we don't have that designation, but I think it'd be easy to add on once we're ready to to look to hydrogen for Maui. Did we do anything on the Big Island at all? On, we're currently working on the Big Island and okay. Kauai uh, proposals. Um, we didn't mean to leave them out in this first okay. round. It was just a matter of um, time. manpower yeah, and time yeah. at the office. Um, but we definitely recognized well, that. That was a big effort. I, I don't think people realize <coughs> how big an effort that was. Yeah, actually, our proposal, <coughs> excuse me, our proposal was. Um, a really great exercise for us to develop the maps and look at all the different um, analytics to go behind the maps of like the number of EVs in that area, the population, um, income levels, et cetera. So uh, it, was, it was helpful to kind of look at that and, and, and gear our charging um, infrastructure around those corridors. Um, right now, there's no money attached to those corridors um, or the designation of such. Um, however, I think it can help to open doors. It really sure. show, sends a signal that we are EV and E-Drive ready and, and or are currently working towards the um, mass adoption. Yeah, I think that's important. A lot of people miss the point that if you, if you don't make the effort to be a part of these programs, mm -hmm. it sends a huge signal that maybe you're not serious. So when you do participate and you do make the effort to, to lean forward and, and be part of these programs, it sends a signal to the folks authorizing money and appropriating money 
that Hawaii is serious and yeah, they should be included in the program. So right. I know the money didn't come right away and, and it may not come for a while, but I'm sure it'll help get some, some money attached to it just because that's how they do things. They look for they look for people that have skin in the game and this mm -hmm. report makes skin in the game for electric vehicles yep, in Hawaii. Exactly, exactly. And we've already used um, the notion of that. We have designated uh, electric drive um, corridors already in some other proposals that we've submitted since then. So we are hoping okay. that we can leverage that to see more investments here in Hawaii. Okay. Yeah. Hey, let's talk, we, we titled this show uh, Catching Up with the 2017 Legislature a little bit. And I know mm -hmm. you've, you've been watching a lot of the bills go through. I don't, I've only just started, Rachel's been doing a bunch in our office, but um, a couple of the bills that I know that, that we're looking forward to, one was, uh, it's been up twice now, we're hoping this year it gets through, is to actually include hydrogen fuel cell vehicles in the definition of electric vehicles under the yeah. law, so that we can, instead of rewriting a bunch of laws for hydrogen fuel cell vehicles, we can just... Mm -hmm kind of incorporate them under the same umbrella as all electric vehicles mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, and doing things like that. We have, um, we're, we're hoping to get a little bit of funding for the DOT buses at the airport to build their station for them this year. Mm -hmm. So I know that the DOT is looking at maybe uh, trying to get some money to build that station mm -hmm. and I'm going to work with them on that. Mm -hmm. What are some of the ones that you're aware of? Um, definitely those two and I had a question for you actually about one of them. Um, but there's quite a few uh, focused on transportation, including transportation. Um, there's a couple focused on looking to set transportation goals, um, ones that look towards 100% by 2045, um, and looking others that look at mode share goal setting. So the transportation goal topic is, is hot and heavy this session. Um, and let's see, there's a few relating to the charging um, infrastructure requirement that is currently on the books. Um, however, it does lack enforcement. And exactly. um, oftentimes, because it lacks enforcement, then there's kind of a lack of um, people actually putting in the, putting in charging Is that stations. the 100 parking stalls um, you need to yeah. put in EV charging yeah. stations? Yeah, so, um, so that legis the legislation that I've seen either wants to increase the number. Um, right now, you just need to install one. Um, if you have 100 stalls that are available to the public, then you just need to set aside one, not one per 100. So there's a couple bills that look at expanding that number one to Great. more, maybe by a percentage or whatnot. And then others um, also look to um, the county authorities to help um, with enforcement mechanisms um, so that'll be interesting it, it is a need for sure to, to add um, or to look to enforcement it's just kind of tricky as to how that can be done considering the law looks to current infrastructure as well so although building codes might help with new construction it is a little bit tricky to, to figure out how you're gonna go back and enforce um, is, is there anything <clears throat> that's keeping us from charging uh, like for example, right now a lot of those those um, plug-in stations in parking lots are like premium places that are right up near the front. So mm -hmm. you're already getting great parking stall and yeah. you're getting free electricity and yeah. it's a great incentive. Yeah. Are we looking at maybe um, allowing or making it so that you have to pay at least a token amount for the electricity so that so that people actually also have some skin in the game. Yeah, I mean, the, the law that's currently on the books doesn't require that you offer free charging or free electricity for that. So it just means that you have to put in a charging station, but you don't have to offer free electricity. Okay. So a, a site host being like, if you're a, you know, a mom and pop, then you want to put in a charging station because you have 100 stalls, then um, you can install any charging station and it can actually have like a credit card capability right. where you just scan the card and it's charged up. Um, the other is that when the law first went out, it did specify the charging station or the parking stall needed to be up front, but then there had been sense modifications that basically said wherever the charging station, or the charging station can go anywhere in the parking lot as long as it's not replacing ADA stalls. Okay. So we found that it's actually not always feasible to put the EV charging station right up front near the elevator mm -hmm. if your electric panel or your electric box way is on way side. on the other side. Yeah. And also, it's not so much of having that premium <laughs> parking right up front that's needed. Um, it's more about just having a charging station. Mm -hmm. Although we would want site hosts to not stick them in the back or, st or stick them, you know, by, right. down by the dumpster the, where you can't find the them. the boonies. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. I did have a question, though, about sure. the, um, the hydrogen, um, the, the bill wanting to include hydrogen in the definition of electric vehicles so that you can take advantage of the HOV lanes and the free parking. Um, I am friends on Facebook with the Big Island EV Association. 
and I see their comments coming in and out. And um, one of the comments was um, mentioning how that if that bill passed, um, their concern about hydrogen vehicles when there's more on the road, hydrogen vehicles taking up EV stalls. How do you think that we can avoid that from happening? Because I know one would yeah. think like, well, they won't, they won't need that charging station, so they're not going to want to park there. But parking's a premium, right. and they may want to park there. It's already a challenge to even get EVs to park there and yeah. not be iced out by... I don't, I don't think that would be hard to deal with because you could easily modify the, the, um, the, parking, the county parking regulations mm -hmm. to say that even though a fuel cell vehicle is an electric vehicle, if, it, if you can't plug into the plug-in station, mm -hmm. you don't use the stall. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, right now, none of the hydrogen <clears throat> fuel cell vehicles that are out there use a plug. the uh, plug-in part. And it's mostly because they're trying to keep the cost of the vehicles down so they don't have that option. Uh -huh. um, it actually, though, uh, like our buses that we do for the Air Force, they actually can plug in as well. Right. So if, you're, if you are plug-in capable and you are plugged in, mm -hmm. okay, that's okay. Mm -hmm. But right now, none of the commercial cars are mm -hmm. and there it, it should be kind of stipulated that you have all the rights mm -hmm. as and in a, but in a parking space you need to be plugged in because we it, we're looking at the same kind of thing too mm -hmm. we're also looking at things like for all electric vehicles whether hydrogen or um, plug-in um, there's no gasoline tax and that's where a lot of the revenues to fix our state highways and roads come in so how do we start compensating the Department of Transportation for revenues they lose mm -hmm. from gasoline tax and mm -hmm. things like that. So those are kind of future things we yeah. want to look at in legislation. Well, yeah, there is a bill actually that looks to in adding a surcharge for electric vehicles at I think about a hundred dollars, um, and so we're we're looking into that. We do. Um, feel that EVs should be paying their fair share. Everyone should be paying mm -hmm. their fair share. Um, however, we don't, we're kind of looking at maybe that surcharge right now could be premature. Yeah. Um, be, given that the Department of Transportation is um, conducting a road user charge study that actually looks at the possibility of um, replacing the gas tax, to my understanding, this may not, um, yeah. the replacing the gas tax uh, with a vehicle miles traveled tax. So basically, tax you for however how many miles, yeah, yeah, how much you use the road. Um, so we're hoping that, that through that study, it'll kind of make suggestions yeah. for legislation rather than potentially prematurely, like yeah. adding a surcharge. Um, and really, at the end of the day, I mean, I, th I think it'll be interesting to see with the you know DOT's legislation, and we're going to coordinate with them um, mm -hmm. prior to submitting testimony. However, it'd be interesting to see. Um, you know, if EV, what percent EVs actually have an impact on that lost revenue compared to more fuel efficient vehicles? I think as the cap based sure. standards were increased, I think it's really the, not to point fingers, but I do think as vehicles become more efficient in general and or hybrids can um, maybe contributing to that loss of revenue more so than just the um, 5,000 EVs, although it's great that we do have yeah. 5,000, yeah. No, that's true. And and I think it it's, it's a lot more complex issue than most people realize because, for example, most plug-in vehicles, like a Tesla in particular, with a lot of batteries, mm -hmm. is a heavy, heavy car. Mm -hmm. It's not a lightweight car mm -hmm. like a Leaf. Mm -hmm. So, True. you know, you'd have to differentiate by car weight. like And most of the yeah. weight taxes for the registration are yeah. there now. But looking at the real complex, is a heavier car or truck? Right, maybe that's a better it's, way It's tougher it. on the road. So right. mileage and the weight of the vehicle and have some yeah. formula that yeah. puts all of it together in yeah. there. So it's, it's something that's going to take a good study yeah. and a good look at. And yeah. to be fair, to everybody yeah. to make sure that it's done right. But it's something that we know that the DOT's got to look at. They yeah. just, they got to take it into account. Yeah, it's well, helpful that it's been introduced this year just to at least have that a, a good discussion. And I think it was introduced last year as well. So yeah. um, it's definitely a, a, a good topic to discuss and there's a need for, for that. It's just how, yeah. how can you do it in a sustainable manner and, and that's gonna fit everyone's yeah. needs while still helping to further EV adoption. Okay. Well, we're going to take a quick break here and uh, talk about some of the other shows here on ThinkTech, and we'll be back in about 60 seconds. Hello, I'm Marianne Sasaki. Welcome to ThinkTech Hawaii, where some of the most interesting conversations in Honolulu go on. I have a show on Wednesdays from 1 to 2 called Life in the Law, where we discuss legal issues, politics, governmental topics, and a whole host of issues. I hope you'll join me. Aloha, I'm Carl Campagna, host of Think Tech Hawaii's Movers, Shakers, and Reformers. I hope you join us over the next several weeks as we take a deep dive into biofuels in Hawaii. 
and explore the alternative fuels supply chain necessary for the local and global transition towards transportation fuel sustainability. Join us as we have good conversations with our farmers, our producers, our conversion technologies, our investors, and our legislators as we try to achieve our transportation sustainability goals. See you soon. Hey, welcome back to my lunch hour. Stan Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii with Margaret Larson from the State Energy Office, my partner in crime in all things electric transportation in Hawaii. And we're talking about some of the things going on in the legislature and uh, and what's new in Hawaii. We actually have a, meet, a fairly regular meeting at least once a month. We try and do it at least once a month, sometimes more often than that, and get the, the key players like Mitch Ewan from the HNEI and folks from the State Energy Office and my office at HCAT to talk about what's going on in the state so we'll uh, we'll cover a little bit more about what's going on uh, in the state and then uh, um, I'm going to tell you what, what we're doing in, at HCAT to uh, to do our part in the whole thing and it has to do with getting our own vehicle for a change but um, I talked to Mitch yesterday and I know we're supposed to have a meeting today too and he's on the big island yeah. with Good. some folks from visiting from Italy believe it or not huh. on in energy huh. and they're talking hydrogen with Blue Planet on the big island okay, cool. but um, there's a lot going on in the Big Island with um, with grid and hydrogen transportation. Mm -hmm. His station on the Big Island is is coming along. Mm -hmm. They're they're having the same kind of, kind of permitting issues, I think, that mm -hmm. uh, Toyota is mm -hmm. uh, and Surfco here with getting their permits. He's done, done the education with the county right. already. But um, it still takes a little bit to get it through the, the mill. Mm -hmm. But once he's finished, he should have a hydrogen station at Nelha on the Big Island. Mm -hmm. So the first outside the military base hydrogen station on the Big Island certainly mm -hmm. will be in mm -hmm. Kona and Elha. Mm -hmm. And um, at that point, they're, they're looking and hoping to get some of those barais over there to, mm -hmm. uh, to be able to fuel them. Mm -hmm. And then at that point, we'll also deliver the two hydrogen buses to Volcano National Park, mm -hmm. and they'll be able to, to run off the hydrogen mm -hmm. there. So there's things going on, on there. So are we hoping that this year, 2017 year, the rooster is going to be the year for hydrogen on the Big Island? I'm, I'm hoping so. I'm hoping so, too. Yeah, because, yeah. you know, it's funny. The, the folks in my office and the folks that I deal with on the mainland that deal with hydrogen, they're all so excited because in 2016, we just saw this ramp up of activity in hydrogen. Mm -hmm. And it's not just in Hawaii and it's not just in California. It's on the East Coast, it's in Europe. Europe is going crazy. Mm -hmm. Denmark has an entire island that's all hydrogen, you know, mm -hmm. all plumb for hydrogen, doing mm -hmm. hydrogen. Um, they're doing great things with um, power to uh, grid, to, grid power uh, storage and what we'll call power to gas, gas to power mm -hmm. uh, in Europe that has to do with hydrogen. Just so much stuff going on. People are getting really excited about the, you know, the the future and using hydrogen Good. in in some of our vehicles. So there's just tons going on there. Good. Here on Oahu, we've had um, we work with Hawaii Gas. They're doing a lot of stuff, mm -hmm. and uh, they're they they promise to help support the hydrogen uh, networks on on Oahu, mm -hmm. and uh, they need a little bit of help with some legislation as well. <coughs> so we'll work with them on that. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, last year, the legislature passed um, some funds your way to support with planning for a hydrogen fueling station near the airport, right. is that right? That's for the Department of Transportation. Uh -huh. Yeah, in How's fact, that been going? That's, that's actually good. We met with DOT this week <clears throat> to, to get into more detail on the project itself. Mm -hmm. They're looking at converting 12 to 16 40-foot buses mm -hmm. to do all of the shuttles for the, the rental car agencies mm -hmm. so that none of the separate agencies will rent have their own buses. Mm -hmm. It'll be a one pool of buses and they'll all be hydrogen fuel cell powered. Mm -hmm. And we Are they talked, looking to replace or retrofit? those ones? The original plan was to have nine buses that were part of a five-year temporary contract mm -hmm. run by Roberts Hawaii mm -hmm. and then start to transition those buses from Roberts to the state mm -hmm. and convert them as a transition. Mm -hmm. But they, we, we reassessed that and mm -hmm. it looks like uh, the state's just going to purchase either brand new hydrogen vehicles or mm -hmm brand new vehicles and convert them to hydrogen mm -hmm. at the end of that contract or near the end. I see. So we're going to design a station that will either be right at the airport or on Lagoon Drive or mm -hmm. possibly at the foreign trade zone mm -hmm. and move hydrogen to the airport when needed for these buses. So mm -hmm. we're looking at the, the money that, w that was proposed to the legislature. Mm -hmm. We're actually looking at several options to design stations that can support that effort. Mm -hmm. And that will lead into state agencies doing hydrogen forklifts and hydrogen fleets and other plug-in electric fleets mm -hmm. and things like that. And mm -hmm. I, I think that there's some initiatives by DOT 
currently um, to actually start purchasing electric vehicles for their fleet. They've made an, a unilateral commitment right. to go to electric <clears throat> vehicles. So yeah. I'm really happy that the, the state DOT and Ford and the folks at DOT, they're, they're leaning way forward and doing their part, yep. more so than probably any other state agency to, to go green with their mm -hmm. transportation mm -hmm. sector. Yeah, we've definitely been working with them to identify yeah. what um, types of vehicles could we match with electric vehicles, and I've been working with the EPA and the DOE to say, you know, what type of vehicles are out there that are all electric when it comes to medium and heavy duty vehicles, mm -hmm. so we can see if there's a good match there. Um, kind of same with the hydrogen kind of realm, because. Um, Right now, I think that's where a lot of their, their fleet needs are. Yeah. Yeah, and, and a lot of people ask me about, like, pickup trucks and, you know, and in yeah. Hawaii, I mean, let's let's face it, the Toyota Tacoma is probably right. outsells every other vehicle on the right. island, and people always here have a, a tendency to want to get pickup trucks. Yeah. And that's one of the things that you just don't see in the electric vehicle realm. So we're actually talking to a lot of the manufacturers about, hey, when are you going to start doing more in a pickup truck frame? Mm -hmm. And when you try and do a battery pickup truck, you, you end up putting a lot of batteries in and it starts to hurt the, the weight of the vehicle and the, and the efficiency of the vehicle. Mm -hmm. So they're not, we're not sure when that's going to happen, but GM just came out with a military vehicle mm -hmm. based on their Colorado 4x4, mm -hmm. and that thing is uh, it's just unbelievable. I think it's, I saw it's it. It's a beast, yeah. yeah. I think our friend Chris Colquitt was, right. was helping to support that. Yes, and yeah. the Army is going to bring that out here and demonstrate oh, really? it at Schofield at some point. Really? Yeah, I've, oh, I've been working cool. with them and their working group to when oh. they showcase it and test it oh. to bring it out here. And, and what are they thinking of doing that? I, they didn't set a timeline. They picked like six bases across the U.S. Oh, and, we and, were and one well? of them is going to be in Hawaii. Oh, awesome. Probably yeah, that actually looks like a really yeah. cool vehicle. And they, they've done a big press release on it. It's it's oh. awesome. Cool. But, but even Good a little old HCAP, guess what? We're we're going to get a Polaris Gem, a little electric. Uh, Neighborhood electric. Quad, yeah, yeah, quad vehicle, two-seater. Um, but what will be different about it is we're not just taking it as an electric vehicle. We're going to actually install a solar panel on top. Mm -hmm. We're going to convert it to a hydrogen fuel cell range extender. So it'll be able to go 300 miles wow. on a That's tank a of hydrogen and a charged up battery. So and will it still have a plug on it? It'll still have a plug on it. Mm -hmm. But you can just park it in the sunlight and it'll keep the battery charged. Uh, and if you, if we want, there's another option we can get with it. We're not going to get it right now. It's expensive. Mm -hmm. But you can actually take a little hydrogen electrolyzer and put it in the back because it's got a little like flat bed in the mm -hmm. back. And you can make, make your, your own, own hydrogen with solar wow. and water in you two days. One of those. In two days, it'll fill the tank up with hydrogen from, wow. from empty to full. And huh. so we're, we're going to look at that, but that's not in our budget right now. We'll have to... Who else has those type of vehicles already? They're only... Like where they're, did you come up with that idea? It's on their website that you can con get a conversion kit? The, the way I actually got exposed <clears throat> is um, last summer I went to Earth Day Dallas, in mm -hmm. Earth Day Texas in Dallas mm -hmm. with Blue Planet. And there's a gentleman there named Mike, Mike Strisky, and he's been on my show before. Mm -hmm. And he has a hydrogen house in New Jersey. And he runs a company that just went public, mm -hmm. and he sells hydrogen accessories, including conversion kits like mm -hmm. this. So he's going to actually sell us the conversion okay. kit to do the conversion. And we'll do some high school students mm -hmm. here on Oahu to do the conversion with us and do a little TV production. And, uh, cool. and it's turning into a kind of a big deal. So we're, nice. we're excited about it. Rachel do you think this really summer, excited. this fall? Um, I'm hoping pretty quick here. Yeah, cool. Well, so, make sure you let us know. Yeah. Do we have time, Missouri, for that video? <clears throat> okay, we're going to run a real quick video here. This is a really neat um, video that we, uh, we got from the Department of Energy. Um, they did a show in conjunction with Motor Week, and uh, it's a great little video. Just this year, Honda, Hyundai, and Toyota all debuted production-ready hydrogen fuel cell vehicles, although initially they will only be available in limited areas. Things under the hood of a fuel cell vehicle look a little different than what you find under the hood of a gas or diesel vehicle. In fact, a fuel cell vehicle actually is an EV, but it makes its own electricity from hydrogen. There's no need to plug it in to recharge. To see just what one drives like, I jump behind the wheel of a Toyota Mirai sedan. Much like a traditional EV, things are very quiet and had me asking, is this thing even on? But with
With the popularity and petrol-hungry reputation of SUVs, it seemed only natural for me to check out this new hydrogen Hyundai Tucson as well. And again, the drive was very similar to a battery electric vehicle with that really quick get up and go. So why hydrogen over battery electric? For one, the time it takes to refuel. So it just takes a few minutes. Um, to fuel, and so there it's more similar to gasoline vehicles um, as opposed to charging the battery. Another plus for hydrogen vehicles, their range. The EPA estimate for the Toyota Mirai I drove is 312 miles. The Hyundai Tucson boasts 265 miles per tank, and each one of those miles is pollution-free. The only kind of emissions that come out of hydrogen electric vehicles are a little bit of heat and H2O. Even considering the energy it takes to produce, deliver, store, and transport hydrogen, or what the Fuel Cell Technologies Office defines as well-to-wheel emissions, hydrogen comes out ahead. If you look at today's uh, gasoline vehicle, on uh, average, um, based on you know, all the assumptions, we have roughly almost about a pound of carbon emissions per mile of driving. If you're producing hydrogen from natural gas, there's about half of that in terms of emissions, uh, total well-to-wheels emissions. So why aren't we all driving hydrogen vehicles? Well, it starts with the high cost of the fueling stations, the fuel cell vehicles, and the hydrogen fuel itself. But the West Coast, California in particular, is making strides. And California, the state, has actually set aside funding specifically to install hydrogen stations. Similar to other alternative fuels, collaboration seems to be key in making hydrogen more mainstream. Take this fueling station in Washington, D.C. It's a partnership between the Department of Energy and the National Park Service. And with the station right in their backyard, the Greater Washington Region Clean Cities Coalition is making moves too, talking with D.C. government about purchasing hydrogen vehicles now that a station is logistically available. Washington, D.C. has, over the years, been an innovator as it related to alternative fuel programs. And I see, again, the District of Columbia government, the Department of Public Works, making some major efforts to bring hydrogen to the city. Other than California, the three automakers have yet to announce which market areas the fuel cell vehicles will be offered in next. But after my drives, there's no denying the potential and practicality of hydrogen-powered cars. So this time, the future of this future fuel looks like it may be much sooner than we thought. He, the energy man, has had the chance to drive all those vehicles, and they're awesome vehicles. I actually, I hate to pick favorites, but I like the Hyundai as well. The Toyota is really great, but uh, I'm into SUVs too, and that, that, that Hyundai is really a sweet vehicle to drive. They had a lot of get up and go. Anyway, we're hitting the end of our time here, uh, Margaret, and I appreciate you coming in. Yeah. And uh, do keep doing great work at the energy office. I mean, uh, that, that corridor project really got a lot of great attention in Good, D.C., thank you. so nice judge job there. Good. Thanks for having me on your show, and thanks for bringing me to the beach today. On, yeah, it's uh, good to be at the beach yeah. on a Friday, yeah. getting ready for the weekend. Surf's yeah, up definitely. on the North Shore. So, everybody, thanks for being with us on uh, Stanton Energy Man, and we'll see you next Friday. Bye.